Good evening, guys. Today we're going to talk about various bone diseases. Now, we're going to begin by looking at osteoporosis. Why are we looking at osteoporosis first? Because osteoporosis is in many ways the simplest one. Why is it the simplest one? Because all the lab values appear normal, including alkaline phosphatase over here. And what does that mean? That means that the PTH is normal, the serum calcium is normal, and the phosphate is normal in osteoporosis. What's happening in osteoporosis? Well, there's two ways to get it. You have type 1, which is associated with postmenopausal women. And essentially what happens to them is they have a reduced amount of estrogen, which lead to, leads to increased amount of bone reabsorption. And you also have a second kind. This one happens to senile people, and they essentially don't move around a lot. And that leads to increased, uh, decreased uh, work on the bones, decreased gravity affecting the bones, and that leads to osteoporosis. What is osteoporosis? Well, it's a decreased bone mass, and that can be partially because of diet, which also happens to all people because they don't properly eat enough calcium and they get osteoporosis. Now, what do we compare osteoporosis to? Well, an important disease and a good one to start with is Paget's. Why? Well, if we're considering the diagnosis of osteoporosis, then all the lab values that they were given are probably normal. And the only difference between osteoporosis and Paget's disease in terms of lab values is in Paget's disease, you have increased alkali and phosphatase. That's how you distinguish the two. Now, what is Paget's disease? Well, Paget's disease is you have increased activity of both osteoclasts and osteoblasts. So blasts slay the bone, clasts break the bone. So what's happening is you're going over the bone, you're destroying bone, making bone, destroying bone, making bone, and this activity creates elevated alkaline phosphatase activity. You see a little uh, eater here, a little Pac-Man, that's to remind you that this involves osteoclasts, and a little builder here, a little guy, that reminds you that involves osteoblasts. Now another thing you want to know about Paget's disease, which is kind of important, is uh, you have this at, you have a heart here, which we have a blue connection between a blue and a red, which is an artery and a vein. And what's this relationship? Well, you get fistulas, which connect an artery and a vein in Paget's disease. And this can cause uh, increased amount of blood going to the heart, and the patient will die eventually from high output cardiac failure. And this is something to consider. Uh, people will sometimes reference a hat size when they're talking about Paget's disease. And that makes me think of like Breaking Bad hat or something like that. But Paget's disease. Think about why do you have this? Because you have shifting. Um, the bones are just being remodeled everywhere all the time, and skull bones change shape, and this can this can be what the doctor is witnessing as a symptom. The next disease we're going to look at is osteopetrosis. And what is osteopetrosis? Well, we have to think about the petrosis part and the pet part. That doesn't deal with animals. It deals with petrified or stone, like Harry Potter, petrified. So what does this mean? Well, here you have a defect in osteoclasts, and that means that you're unable to break bone. So as a result, you can't remodel the bone and it just keeps getting bigger. It's not necessarily functional. Bone is not just big, it has to be strong and functional. This is achieved by remodeling it with various osteoclasts. And they do this by create, keeping an acidic environment that they can use to digest bone. And this is done with carbon and hydrase too, which is the defect in this condition. And this is sometimes a little bone that you have here. It's, I have it in green. It's supposed to remind you that osteopetrosis is treated with a bone marrow transplant. Why? Well, because osteoclasts are derivatives of macrophages, which come from the myeloid line. And if you could, in theory, give the person a new bone marrow, then they can make healthy osteoclasts, and that would be okay. Now, what do we need to know about this condition? Well, in terms of lab values, you have normal PTH, you have normal PO4, but you have decreased serum calcium. So you see decreased serum calcium... It's one of the diagnoses you should keep in mind, especially if all the other lab values are normal. Now, osteomalacia and rickets, this is a vitamin deficiency. You have a vitamin D deficiency, and rickets happens in children. Osteomalacia happens in adults. But basically, you have um, inappropriately mineralized bones because osteoblasts are working without calcium because they don't have vitamin D, and they can't um, lay properly mineralized bone without it. Osteotitis fibrosa cystica, this specific condition is unique in that it's kind of, in this condition, everything is wrong. The PTH is elevated, the PO4 is elevated, and the serum calcium is typically high. Now, why is the serum calcium high? Well, what happened here is it's one of two pathologies. It's either a parathyroid carcinoma or a renal complication where you have too much PTH. So the body is getting signals to eat all the bone 
for all the osteoclasts. Why? Because it doesn't think it has enough. So it's being stimulated by the PTHs. But this is a false signal, and what this leads to is utter destruction of a patient's bone, and ultimately it will lead to fibrosis replacing where the bone used to be. Now, this chart is great and everything, but you need a way of solving this on the exam, and you need a way of solving it quickly. So the mnemonic that I use is a simple plan, because that's what you need when you have a bone problem. A simple plan. Why a simple plan? Well, because of the three things we're going to look at. Alkaline phosphatase, serum calcium, and phosphate. Now, how does a simple plan work? Well, it works just like this little arrow right here. You begin over here, and you move counterclockwise until you get to osteitis fibrosa cystica. Now, what are we going to do here? Well, first, we're going to look at alkaline phosphatase. Alkaline phosphatase, if it's normal, and every other lab value is normal, you're probably looking at osteoporosis. Of course, you have to look at the clues and see if the history makes sense. But if it does, that's a really good indicator. Let's say alkaline phosphatase is elevated, but everything but serum calcium is normal. Well, you're probably looking at Paget's disease at that point, because that's how you distinguish osteoporosis from Paget's disease. You look at alkaline phosphatase and, of course, the patient's history. Well, let's say that the serum calcium is abnormal. Well, then you look at the phosphate. And if the phosphate is normal, then you're looking at osteopetrosis. And again, you may want to check the patient's symptoms and see if it, it looks like osteopetrosis, if he, in fact, has an osteoclast-only defect. Well, let's say that's not the case. Let's say his phosphate is either high or low. Well, if his phosphate is low, then it's osteomalacia rickets. Um, why, why is this the case? Because in those, if you look at those diseases on the chart, that's, that's how you distinguish them. If you look at osteotitis fibrosa cystica, you'll have high phosphate. Um, I'm sorry, these last two values, they're serum values. And you look back to point two in order to do this. So after, if the phosphate came out normal, then you look at serum, and I'm going to write this here. You look at low serum calcium. And this is high serum calcium. And that's why you have this arrow here looking back at these points. And I'm going to write 2 plus, just because calcium is 2 plus. Essentially, this chart can be memorized by simply following this chart in reverse order if you know uh, which lab values you follow in which order. And the mnemonic is a simple plan. Again, you start by looking at alkaline phosphatase, you follow by looking at serum calcium, and then phosphate. If you still don't have your answer, then good luck.